Hello, I'm Carly Myers, and today I'm joined by City and Color. Dallas, we have a ton of exciting things to talk about. Well, yes, depending on if, what your excitement level is towards me, yes. I am very <laughs> excited. We've got a new live album, Guide Me Back Home, and it's the first release from the new record label, Still Records. Uh, what came to you first, the idea of doing this live album, recording it cross-country, or the record label? Uh, the, the, the tour, the, the tour came first, um, because when we, d when we booked the tour, we, we sort of decided to, re it wasn't with the plan to record every show and then make a record out of it. It was sort of like, I wanted to go and do this, um, long tour of a bunch of small towns that I had never been to. And so once that kind of came to fruition, we decided we would maybe record every show just to document it and see, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. Um, because we could. So we rented a bunch of nice uh, recording equipment and did that. And then it wasn't until it wasn't until we started sifting through all the all the shows and found that there was you know the the recordings were were really good. And um, that's when the idea of like the putting a record together that wasn't just a live show one show, but trying to make like like an album of the entire tour, you know. Right. Um, and I think that the cool part for us was that my goal was to try to get at least a song from every town, which we didn't end up doing because, you know, just certain you needed, we needed act, um, at the end of the day, we needed to focus on the best version audio wise of each song. So some of them are repeats, but I think, um, the, the coolest part for me was that, you know, it's not just, uh, live and at Massey Hall, it's like. The first song is from Wolfville, Nova Scotia at Acadia University, and the second track is from Surrey, BC, and it's just like this kind of interesting idea where you don't really see that that often. You no. Know? Carl, who produced the record and recorded it, really like painstakingly went over everything to try to to also blend it in. So if you close your eyes, you you kind of are just like listening to a show, but it's from a different room all over the country on every song. Um, and then that's when that coupled with, um, I, I'd produced a record by a songwriter named Ben Rogers from Vancouver last year as well, which was my first time doing that, uh, like producing a record outside of my own music. Mm -hmm. And when he didn't have a record label. And so it was these two things that had happened kind of back to back that it was like, oh, maybe I can start something of my own that is is sort of like, a, you know, it's a, it's a part of the Dynalone family, mm -hmm. but it's just a sort of like a new chapter, you know, in and a way that I can put up my own music on it, but then also sort of try to focus on things that either I'm going to maybe try to produce in the future or just things that I think are great that I want to bring attention to. So these two things came together and it was just a hell of a way to launch it. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. was just sort of like, a wow, well, you know, we could have just, I guess we could have helped Ben get a record label or a deal or... I could have just put this record out on Dine Alone, but it was like just a sort of a, almost like a rebirth, like a way to like um, rejuvenate my my creative uh, energy. A new project to shake it up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. I don't think it matters what you do for a living. That time comes for, Exa yes, for everybody. E exactly. Um, getting back to uh, Guide Me Back Home, the live record recorded across the country. Uh, you said you had all of this material. So I'm sure you had versions of songs that sounded awesome in multiple places. Is there any pairings on the record where you're like, okay, I really want this song from Banff? Is there any connection between uh, the venues? Or yeah, there's a, there's a couple. I mean... There's a, what is there's a couple of really special moments for us where, um, for instance, uh, the version of Oh Sister, which is on the record, I can't necessarily remember the venue right now, but it's the only time we played it on the tour. I wasn't really playing it that much, and um, I usually play that song by myself, but this one night I played it, uh, maybe out of like three times I played it on the whole tour, I played it and Matt Kelly played pedal steel over it. And we'd never done it before. He just decided to play. And I feel like it makes the song so much more haunting. And it was the only time we ever did it. And the recording happened to be good. And there was no like, because the, the way we, the process we had was, because there's 28 shows of two hour sets, that's a lot of music. It's a lot of tunes. So Carl had this three highlighter system 
where if, when he was listening while we were playing, if there was a cough or a bottle drop or a chair creak or I, wow. he would just scratch it off and we wouldn't even listen to it. So it had to be like a, a perfect storm. Mm -hmm. So something like that, where we played it once like that and it happened to be good. Like, I'm like, I feel good about that. Or there's a song, um, the second track is called Friends and it was in Surrey, BC at this uh, high school auditorium. And, you know, I had, I had just sort of, uh, I told a story about how I tried to go up out into the upper deck of the auditorium, but I ended up in the high school and I couldn't get back in. <laughs> told this During the show? During, no, before the show. Oh, when before I was the like show. Sound, before sound check. But then, um, so I told this long winded story. And then before I played the song, I said, okay, well, this song's called Friends. It's about my friends. And it goes out to anyone who came with their friends. And that's usually what I would say before that song every night. But just so happens that after I said that, these two guys who weren't sitting near each other, like one guy was up in the balcony and one guy was down in the front. The one guy goes, after I said, like, this is um, for anybody who came with their friends, one guy goes, hi, Dave. I knew it. And then the guy from the front <laughs> row goes, love you, Phil. <laughs> and it's like, perfect. It's like, and I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then I played the song and I happened to play the song well. So we got that version, you know. So and like, Carl's there with the highlighter, he's, like, he's like yeah, nailed it. Yeah. You know, so it's like little things like that where it's like, man, I that could have happened, then I could have totally blown the, the song. Yeah. But we had like a perfect storm of like this beautiful moment with these two guys and then I played the song and it worked and so little things like that are to me are like kind of f filled throughout the the record and it's like for us it's a it's like a snapshot of these beautiful moments we had. But like, hopefully, like those two guys hear this record and go like, "Oh my God, that's us!" And everybody that was at that show remembers that moment. And like I think an it's audio a nice scrapbook. Moment. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think for people who now hear that story, are like, "Oh, that's great." Mm -hmm. You know. Um, you've had such a unique opportunity um, because you've seen most of this country, and it's such a big country. And I know this past summer you had the chance to visit none of it. Mm -hmm. And was that your first time? Yes. And how was that experience for you? I mean, it's always a pleasure and an honor to go somewhere you've never been and um, to to play and sing and have people be interested in it. That's no matter where you go. That's just always, I'm always, um, feel very lucky to be able to do that. But, um, you know, to go to a place like that, that, again, a place that not, not a lot of people will go, not a lot of people get to go to, and feel the warmth uh, of the people there whether they were native people or um, just, you know, people that were living there for work, something, it was just really, yeah, it was like, you know, I just played the Legion Hall, which is also like the Legion Hall is the dance club. It's also the bar. And, um, yeah, we just met beautiful people. And um, I met this family who they did, they did some throat singing for us and just gave us a, a, a lot of great, you know, lessons about culture and, yeah, it was just a real, uh, a real eye-opening experience for me to be able to do that. You know, yeah. felt very lucky, to, for a numerous amount of reasons. But, yeah, it's very interesting that it's within our borders, and we know so little about it. At least most of us. Yeah. About that area of the country, how would you say that Canada has shaped you as an artist? Well, um, you know, I think the 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 main the main thing that, for me, is um, without the help of of all of the, the great grant system that Canada has to offer to Canadian artists, you know, I, there's a good chance that I wouldn't be here sitting talking to you. You know, we, when we first started, when Alexis on Fire first started, you know, it was only because of the getting like factor and, and things like that, that allowed us to go and try and tour and try and make a living off of, off of it. Um, and you know, and I'm a product of that. I'm a product of, of them giving us a helping hand. So that to me, is the number one thing but you know I think um there's there's something about being a Canadian artist and being okay with that like there's it's almost like there's two sides of us you know there's the people that just all they want to do is be popular in America and as soon as they are they'll never come back or they'll never um sort of appreciate what it what it is to be from here and try but, and then there's the rest of us who, um, you know, it's nice to be, I, I'm, I'm happy that I've been able to go around the world and play. I'm happy that I can go to, um, you know, America or Australia or Europe and play and people are interested or go to Brazil and, 
But the thing that makes me most happy is that I can come home and feel appreciated and feel like the, the people, the first people that started listening to me are still listening to me. And that's sort of why I wanted to do this tour is go and play all the towns that I haven't played because how many times have I gone across Canada and toured and only played in Vancouver or, or only played in Halifax mm -hmm. or like on this record, I played in Sydney, Glace Bay and, and I hadn't been to Sydney, Nova Scotia since I, uh, the time I was there when I wrote the song coming home where I wrote, I've been to Nova Scotia. Yeah. Sydney to Halifax. I hadn't been to Sydney in 12 years since I wrote that song. <laughs> wow. So I was like, man, I have to go. Why am I, why haven't I been back there to play since I wrote this song that like changed my life? And how did it feel singing? It was those great. Lyrics. It was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I, hadn't, I hadn't, you know, I hadn't been able to sing that line. I've sang that line in Halifax like 20 times since then. I say, I've sang that line in Sydney, Australia, and people think it's <laughs> about that. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's, it's about Nova Scotia. Yeah. So um, just being able to go and try to play in all these places where, Maybe kids have driven from there to the major cities to see me play. I just felt like I needed to go and see what was going on in their hometowns. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Guide Me Back Home is the name of the new City in Color live album recorded on last year's Cross Canada tour. Uh, it is available today digitally and a portion of sales talking about um, how much the Canadian music grants have done for you uh, are going to Music Counts, mm -hmm. which is absolutely fantastic. We've got the physical album release, a CD, 3LP set coming out November 23rd. And you should go get it. And before you go, I have to ask you, what are your predictions for the Raptors this season? What are we thinking? I have no idea what to think. <laughs> you know, everybody keeps asking me this. And I keep, my answer is, I need three weeks of games. Okay. Because I don't, who knows? We don't know. I mean, Kawhi just said the other day that he played his first five-on-five -five game since January. And he Ooh. felt good. Well, <laughs> girl, that's great. I hope you feel good. The season starts in 17 days. Um, and then the whole thing with Kyle being upset and yeah, I mean, as I'm glad that we still have most of the kids, like we only traded Bianca Pertl, mm -hmm. which I, who I loved, but it was, so we, at least we still have a lot of the kids and hopefully they'll keep the ship right. Like they did last year too, amongst all these stars with their drama, <laughs> awesome. you know? Yeah, totally. So, Thank you so much, Dallas. Thank you for having me.